Okay, hi guys. I'm here today with Devin Lara. Devin, how are you? I'm I'm massive. I'm sitting on my bed. Just uh, this is the final phase of my training where I just sleep and think terrible things about people. Yeah, we got less than a week now before we fly out to Dubai. All of us, yeah. Yeah, get to eat that nice hotel food and uh, you know sit in the pool and easy days. So my first question is, I know lots of people have asked you, how's your training gone? And you've said it's gone extremely well, but obviously it's been highly intense. Do you feel like this has taken something out of you and that you wouldn't be able to train like this again for a super match in future? Or do you feel that still good and that you could in future do this again? Uh, I think it's a lot like having kids probably for a woman, you know, like, uh, you know, you, you, you make a deal with some dude and you get pregnant and, uh, it's tough, man. Making a baby is tough. And the last thing you ever want to do is right before a woman's about to have birth, be like, Hey, yo, uh, we, we going to do this again, <laughs> you know? but I love it, man. Like I, I really do enjoy everything about it. Um, but I, I also know that, um, you know, everything's a wave, right? So I'll enjoy some downtime for sure after this match. But if I still have it in me, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I will. Hey, Joe, uh, I, I, I'm sure that it's inevitable that I will continue to climb as long as I can. Yeah, nice. And a lot of people, when I said I was going to interview you, asked, what sort of shape do you think you're in compared to when you pulled Michael Todd? So obviously you were big then, yeah. the biggest. Look very it's, strong. It's a very yeah, it's a very interesting time in my career. You know, uh, there's so many factors that go into somebody's shape. Uh, one of the big things is people talk about my shape compared to Michael, compared to when I, you know, 2008 when I was recognized as number one. Um, a lot of differences uh my weight is very very similar which is a great base thing to look at when you're talking about how strong you are as a as a strength athlete my weight is very very similar but my leanness i am more lean now than i was when i faced michael and what's of great interest to me is the measurement of my arms. I actually, actually earlier today, I was looking through some photos uh, from like a year ago, leading up to the Michael match where I was measuring my arms. And yeah, I've grown. I, I have grown. Uh, so my forearm for most of my career, uh, I was at 15, 17. And I know that doesn't sound very impressive. But I was a 15 forearm, 17 upper arm, and I was that way for basically my entire career. When I got into the army, started doing pumpkin training, started to take a little bit more, uh, you know, risks with my training. Uh, the last couple of years, I've, I've had a lot of growth. Uh, so I think I was before Michael, like one year ago, exactly. I believe I was 15 and a half forearm. And uh, I think I was, I think it was 18 and just a tiny bit upper arm. And right now I'm like, if I'm pumped, mm -hmm. I'm like 16 and a quarter forearm and uh, like 19 and a quarter upper arm. So I've put on 0.75 or more in a year on both of, so that's significant yeah yeah that and that's is. the only measurement in arm wrestling that really matters well it's not i mean there's the, your head size obviously uh, but uh you know forearm and upper arms a pretty great place to start have you uh there's been talk i think even hutchins says that you've done a lot of new things for training is that true my training is a constant evolution uh, like I, I'm a, I'm a lover of strength. Okay. I love strength. I love performance. Uh, I've dedicated, dedicated my whole life to being a guy who's 
very interested in physical performance. Uh, I've been uh, an athlete my whole life. I know all the conventional things you're supposed to know. I, I know them all. Uh, I, I've used them all. Uh, I, I've done a lot of experiments uh, where I've tried to keep hold of, you know, the things that everybody knows. And I've tried to kind of learn new things about the body, about my own body. Um, I, I'm, I'm very, very far along now in this thing that I call pumpkin training, uh, which I'm a huge fan of because it's, it's been a very, very successful experiment. Uh, where I'm basically training only my right hand. It has, it's, it's had fascinating effects on my right hand specifically, but also on the rest of my body. It's a fascinating way to train. Uh, one that I normally what I do is I'll run a training system for about a year to two years. I'll beat it up, beat it up, beat it up. And then after I give it a good run, I'll be like, okay, not bad. Let's try something else. This this training has surpassed anything I've done for arm wrestling so far, specifically, you know, one arm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't think many people train like me. Um, and, I, and I've been hesitant to really put it out there in full. I mean, people who know me know how I train. I don't hide anything, but uh, I'd like the experiment just to kind of prove itself. I plan on doing it for at least a good five to seven years in total. And I think in five to seven years, the experiment will speak for itself. Psychologically, has that been difficult to get your head around? Because I think naturally we like balance. Like if I do 10 bicep curls on my right arm, I force myself to do yeah. 10 on the left, even though it's weaker. How's that been for you psychologically? Very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We were all, I mean, all of us, I mean, anybody who you talk to in health and fitness comes from a place uh, where the concept of balance is just common knowledge. Like everybody knows you're supposed to be balanced because it makes you less injury prone. And uh, that's the ideal state of the body. Well, I, I started to really put a lot of questions in that. And I'll tell you from, from my own experience in this experiment all the concerns i had i was so worried i was going to run into serious back problems which i'll tell you i have had my entire life i threw my back out for the first time when i was like 19 working on the oil field i was actually playing basketball when i heard it um and i've dealt with back problems my whole whole life uh you know um there's there's huge concerns when you just lay down tissue on one side and not the other I mean, from, from a common sense perspective, but I'll tell you, hasn't been like that at all. I feel fantastic. I feel healthier. My back problems are, in my opinion, less than what they have been for most of my life. Uh, and on the table, unquestionably healthier, mm -hmm. unquestionably. Yeah. There is a slight blueprint with this with tennis. If you look at someone like Right. Rafael Nadal, for example, he's got a huge left arm oh, yeah. compared to his right. Yeah, and, and, and this, this idea, it's not like it just came out of nowhere for me. I mean, I witnessed, uh, like in, in arm wrestling, we have very, very famous arm wrestlers. You know, the first one that comes to mind is Oleg Zak, uh, a guy called Matthias Schilti. There's, there's other dudes like this um, who, you know, inspired me to create this program. Uh, you know, just based off of, you know, just basically taking all your body's resources and channeling them one to, to one limb. And, you know, in hopes of like shifting my blood flow and, you know, just making the nutrients and making my body just think that that's, that's where it's got to go. And it, it really took, uh, like there's been kind of phases to it, it, it kind of working. And there was, it started to work right away, but there was a massive jump at the two-year point. So, and that's only like about six six months ago, five five or six months ago. Actually, it was right around when I got done pulling John. Um, yeah, it was like it was like there was a big jump in the way it recovered, uh, way it bounced back. Uh, yeah, it's it's not always a linear progression. Yeah. 
You mentioned Oleg Zhog there. Just quickly, I've spent a lot of time recently with around some of the guys here in Russia, like David Dadikan, and he's got mm -hmm. a match against Zhog coming up. What's your yeah. thoughts on that? Any predictions on that one? Um, I do. Um, so, I mean, Oleg is such a huge legend, and his name still carries a ton of weight. Um, Oleg was, you know, before his accident, considered potentially to be the number one guy on the planet left-handed open maybe either way i don't think too many would argue that he was top three or top four in the world mm -hmm. you know at a body weight of like 180 like nobody in his Crazy. weight class was close to him and it was only guys like dennis or like vitali that were like you know maybe gonna beat him mm -hmm. um david looks incredible uh you know i'm you know we're quite far away but i i follow arm wrestling quite closely um from you know, all I, accounts i watched him smash slayev on the left arm at siberian right. power show and i, I watched I him train with Sipenkov, and Sipenkov says yeah. he's the real deal yeah, yeah. I, i've seen that as well i've also seen him uh sparring with vitali mm -hmm. and is super impressive to me and, and it's very questionable for me to to think like i mean that's a very bad accident oleg was in a very very bad accident and um i do think that it's still going to take him some time to to recover mm -hmm. uh and also his last showing uh while he won it he wasn't as dominant as I think he needs to be to beat a guy called like David. I, I think that David's the favorite. I think, I think personally that that guy's incredible. I think that he's got to be the favorite against Oleg still, even though Oleg's name carries a ton, I, I, I put David as the favorite. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only thing working against him is having to lose the weight because he's already lean. Oh like, yeah. 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 But I think you'll be fine. He probably has a 24 hour way in. So, yeah. you know, you can make magic happen in that last 24 hours. Yeah. Get the fluids back on. Yeah. Yeah. You can do a lot. Like, I don't think he's cutting too much. What is it? It's a, is it's it a about, 225? Uh, I think he's got to lose about 22 pounds. Yeah. You can do that in water in a day, in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's not, that's not a bad cut. So he basically, he's walking around like 240 five or eight and he's got a cut to 225 yeah like this yeah it's okay uh, it's easy easy yeah. cut easy cut yeah back to your match everyone sees it as a behemoth of strength and levon versus your incredible endurance is that the way you see it because everyone says if you're going to win this thing you're going to lose the first couple rounds definitely and then draw into the match as as Levin gets tired do you yourself believe that you actually have a chance in the very first round or if you just have a plan to tire him out as opposed to actually trying to go for it then it's it's probably the most analyzed match <laughs> that i've seen like i mean i go on youtube and it's like every single person knows exactly how this match is going to go you know they know what i'm going to do they know what levon's going to do it's just like there i would say that those are the most likely scenarios based off of all the information that we have about both of us um that is the most likely scenarios but i mean there's so many surprises that can happen so many um i i have a lot of respect for levon on the arm wrestling table I'm not sure that he has the same for me. Um, and that's good. That's great, actually. That's, um, I think that when you um, get surprised, it's never good. I, I don't think Levon is going to surprise me. I don't think there's anything he can do to surprise me. But if... If I am able to stop him anywhere near the center of the table, he is so done. He is so done. Like people think it's a close match. If I can stop him like a centimeter or two from the pad and, you know, snake my way to like some kind of stop and then improve my position from there. And that's true. 
But if that match stops anywhere near the center, it's going to be a terrible, terrible day for them, him, because there's no way there is, there is zero chance that he will do the reverse to me. There is no chance he will out arm wrestle me if I'm ever in a favorable position. It will only get worse for him. So it'll be interesting. If things are going bad for him, could we see him go to the King's move? Is that possible? (laughs) I mean, I hope so. I don't know. I mean, I've not seen Levon do the King's move in, in competition. I've not seen that from him. And I have a feeling that he's all wrapped up in concepts like pride and honor, which I have none of. Uh, So I think that he might not allow himself to do such a vile and disgusting move that, you know, you know, who knows, maybe his countrymen would shun him somehow for something like that. But it's a great move. He should. Mm -hmm. I tell you, it's a great move. Talk to me about the uh, art of skullduggery. We see it a lot in in fight sports. I think uh, probably Muhammad Ali was the greatest of all time at that, and Mike Tyson in another way. But you're undoubtedly the man in arm wrestling that knows how to get into people's heads. Do you do that primarily to pit your opponent off or to help psych yourself up? Uh, I, I, I mean, very simply, I just enjoy it and see it as part of the process. Uh, I, I just see like, you know, when you get a match and you sign the contract or you plan on going to a, an event, I mean, why start the fun on the day of the event? Why not start right away? Uh, to me, it's just, it's part of it. It's part of, it's part of the match. It's part of the, uh, the celebrations and good times to be had. Uh, Why do you do it? Um, Well, I guess, because you're allowed. It's, it's just, uh, it's one of the things that you get to do. If, if you're a sportsman, you Mm -hmm. get to, you get to engage in this type of, of combat, conflict, uh, sport, whatever you want to call it, the art of uh, skull drudgery or whatever. I mean, yeah. Um, what I find is emotion, emotion is an interesting thing. Um, emotion, uh, can be good at times and, and, uh, you know, like good for like giving you motivation. Emotion can be good for, uh, you know, giving you strength when you need it or resolve commitment. Um, but when it comes to making decisions, emotion is typically not a good thing so i mean you have to weigh you know when you kind of trigger a person i you know we started the process quite early earlier than i maybe would have liked to but uh, emotion if you can get a guy emotionally worked up in a close match if you're getting killed i mean it doesn't really matter uh but if, if in a close match, you can make someone make a decision that's based on emotion rather than the goal of winning or losing, uh, that's, that's when it really matters. Like if you can test a person's pride or, or make them have to prove something or, or show you that they're, you know, something, I don't know, like uh, that's when decisions are made that sometimes can cost them a match. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You- in the pre-match press conference against John, you laid yeah. in pretty hard to him. Um, yeah. Do you plan to do the same with Levon? And do you have any kind of reservation given the fact that he's been, some would argue, quite threatening in terms of his response to some of the things you said? Do you have any well, reservations yeah, about him? I, mean, I feel like it's it's kind of, with Levon, it's really strange. He's kind of gone a little bit outside the scope of the sport. I mean... There's been physical threats made like, well, this thing's like, well, if he says anything like that to my face, well, who knows, maybe it'll get physical and like, you know, this whole like passive aggressive, like people get killed for that in Georgia, you know, 
to me, that's that's a little bit outside the realm of of the sport. I mean, maybe I'm misunderstanding. I'm gonna keep on pushing the buttons. Right. I'll tell you, if that dude if that dude goes outside of what I think is the sport and lays a hand on me in like a way that's outside of arm wrestling, mm, that'll make for that'll make for an interesting day. That'll make for an interesting day. That will be your second core sports fight night, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, won't, I won't think highly of him if he does that. And uh, that will then leave the realm of sport to me. See, it's not that... Uh, see, I had a fight with core sports, right, with Thor. It was a sport. We agreed to the rules. We agreed we were going to go and punch each other in the face. That's cool. You know, you start to, if, if, for example, you know, I had a bit Thor or hit Thor with a chair or like, you know, stuff like that, you know, it goes outside of the sport. You know, if, you know, if, if, if Levon goes outside of the sport, the sport part is done that is no longer sport and he's crossed into you know that to me is assault you know and i don't i don't like being assaulted uh anyways i don't think that's gonna, i don't think that's gonna no happen. i don't think so either no okay i mean the rest of the match and what's going to happen probably the time for talking is kind of over on that as you say everyone analyzes it but we're going to find out very soon so going forward beyond this match are you done pulling on your left left arm now given that all no this no right. i pull i pull all the time left-handed i i just pull i it's just to me so it's it's part of an experiment and um i i kind of realize I, I i find this experiment so fascinating uh my left is really good it's really good it's just i'm not training it um i've been arm wrestling for a very long time you know just with me going to practice you know somewhat regularly uh, you know, towards the, like, it's, it's weird. It, it, I just don't care about my left. I don't think about my left. My head is not in my left. My head is only in my right hand. Um, but I mean, I, I, well, thanks so much. Look at this. Look, look at Jody. What she brought me. Jody, that's the food Jody brought. <laughs> <laughs> right, I get to sit here, eat Chinese food with my, with my doggy. As well. <laughs> Life is good. Um, I, I will still, <laughs> I'll still compete left-handed. Um, I just, to me, it's more recreational. I, I'm really trying to do something special with my right hand on like a world level. My left hand, I just, I view as more casual. So if you were offered a super match on your left hand, one, would you take it? And two, if you did, would you still carry on training as you are now? Or would you then? Yeah, that's the thing. I, I feel like um, I, I would take it for sure. Uh, I don't really, I don't really want to break this, this, uh, this experiment. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to stop it. So, um, yeah, I feel like I would just carry on, um, and I would just, you know, continue to train my right and left the way that I would. So, I mean, typically what I've been doing when I, when I'm arm wrestling, uh, well, when I'm in a training schedule is, I'll train my right hand exclusively a couple times a day and I'll hit arm wrestling practices. And when I'm in that kind of block, uh, my right hand, sorry, my left hand typically isn't ever sore and it's kind of ready. It's kind of ready uh, just to go whenever. So I would, I do it. I just kind of probably practice on the, you know, Monday or, you know, Wednesday. And then I just show up and I do it. Um, it's it's I, I want to continue on with this experiment for a good five to seven years. I, I think that it will be <laughs> quite an interesting contribution to uh, the Borg of what we understand uh, of, of fitness. I think that people will be able to say, OK, there was this pro arm wrestler that was a balanced human being that was symmetrical. Uh, and, you know, for five to seven years or whatever it is, he just trained his right hand. And this is the final product. Mm -hmm. And this is this is what you can kind of garner from that bit of data. Uh, so I don't really want to be like, oh, I've got this juicy match left hand and I'm going to experiment, abandon this experiment. Because truthfully, 
there's been a lot of times during this workup over the last year and a half that I'd say that my left is actually the best it's ever been in my entire career. Really? Mm. It's, it's really weird. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of crossover. Yeah. There's a lot of carryover. Yeah. 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 And do you plan to pull more frequently given the opportunity? Because obviously the last sort of couple of years you haven't so much, but would you actually like to? Because a lot of guys now we're seeing pulling every couple of months. Yeah, I, I would like to. Um, now, I am pulling all the time. And, you know, people just don't see it. But I'm, at, I'm, I am wrestling clubs, you know, all the time. It's just, you have to pick when, when you train. I actually really enjoy practicing in clubs. Mm. Um, it, it's a big part of uh, the appeal of the sport to me. Um, what I plan on doing after this match is done is I'll go into like more of a recreational period where I will pull a lot more, but it won't be like super high level stuff. It'll be, you know, um, you know, regional, national level stuff where I kind of get to travel and, you know, not do a great big long build up and a peak. It's more like, you know, I just maybe rest for a couple of days and pull. Um, yeah, that's that's the plan. If I have another, it depends on if I win or lose. You know, if I win, uh, then there will be absolutely another massive match looming absolutely it'll be unavoidable because i'll still have the hammer yeah. um if i lose it'll you know make it that i you know i don't have to defend the the title and i can just kind of do whatever i want um but i i'll i plan on arm wrestling forever and there's going to be lots of arm wrestling like yeah in your opinion who is next in line obviously a lot of people had vitali but he's just lost in your opinion who's two or three guys that are in line behind you and Levon? Um, well, there's, there's a handful that are, are really, really good. Um, and, and a lot of it has to do with styles and matchups. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say that if I defeated Levon, it would be my opinion that Levon would still be number two. And that would most likely set up a rematch because I feel that whenever possible, the number one should face the number two. Um, now, if you get rid of Levon, I still am very curious about Vitaly, even though I saw him lose to Dimitri, I, I'm still not convinced that that's a consistent victory. I'm not sure. They're obviously both very good. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'd say that those are probably the top two Russians. And I never know about Dennis. I always think that the vet, that Dennis is, is right there. Like, even if he is weaker, I feel like mm -hmm. still a weak Dennis is still just a crazy strong dude. Um, and then, you know, you have the more active guys like, uh, you have Ermes, you have Gennady, you have Kurdecha, you have Dave Chafee. Um, those those guys are kind of the names that, you know, appear to be, yeah. you know, in the top of the sport. Yeah. Well, the sport as a whole, what's more important to make it grow, to have rules that uh, make it most appealing for viewers or rules that absolutely determine the best arm wrestler? Because... Those two things aren't necessarily always the same. I don't know that they're not the same. I, I think that they can very much be the same. Yeah. I, I think that uh, rules that are appealing to uh, the consumer um, also generally tend to show who the best arm wrestler is. I think that no matter what, people make a lot of excuses about rules. I've arm wrestled with many rule sets. I've arm wrestled with the strictest of rules. For example, like the PAL is probably the strictest of rule sets. They're, they're a WAF rule, ses, rule system, but they're enforced meticulously. Um, people believe there's a lot of like internet, you know, experts that say that the WAL is a loose rule system. And I would disagree. I think that the WAL rule system is actually, um, you know, it's, it's called the way it's supposed to be called. The rule system is, is, is made so that it's, uh, 
much easier to put more power in the hands of the athletes versus the uh, the referee. I've also arm wrestled uh, on productions such as Game of Arms, where we were basically told, you know, all the athletes knew it. We all knew it that the referee basically had no power. Basically, it was like you guys are going to go at it and we're going to edit it and we want to see a show. And in my opinion, under most of those systems, uh, the right guy wins. And it's actually my opinion that the tighter the rule system and the more power you give the referee, actually the more chance that you, uh, you actually screw it up. Um, So I'm very much in favor of a very um, a rule system that puts the power in the hands of the athletes. And, and I'm not saying that it's a rule system where the referee does not call the rules. No, absolutely not. The, 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 the referee must enforce the rules. However, the rules must be written in a way so that the outcome is more likely determined by the athletes. Um, that's why I'm, 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 I'm very much in favor of, of WAL rule system. And I think that they will even have, there are, there are more improvements to come in rules for arm wrestling. I'm sure of it. There's, there's many that are out there that I know will, will help the sport, Mm -hmm. but, uh, ridiculous levels of enforcement. Uh, I, I do not believe are the answer. I think that the wor- probably the worst thing for the sport is, uh, is the referee's grip followed closely by the intentional slip rule. I think that these two things have killed more high level matches. Um, yeah. Bad for the sport in my opinion. Mm, which when I interviewed Dennis and Plenkov, he pretty much echoed what you were saying there. Well, Dennis is brilliant. <laughs> I love Dennis. <laughs> yeah. And Looking back on your fight against Thor, obviously I was there, followed that journey pretty closely. It was a pretty kind of epic time. How do you kind of reflect on that? And do you feel that has had any kind of positive impact on your arm wrestling too, perhaps something you took away from that? Yeah, I I loved it. Uh, It was just like a kind of like a a recess to my arm wrestling career. Uh, I really like people ask me a lot, like why I did it, you know, one of the biggest reasons on why I did it is I was just genuinely so excited about the Eddie versus Thor match. I was so excited. I was just every single thing that came out. I was like, I mean, I cannot wait to watch these dudes fight. I was, I'm such a big fan of both of them. I'm like, it's just going to be incredible. And then when I found out that Eddie was injured, I'm like, Oh my God, I'm like, we cannot stop this party. And I'm like, you know, just being an idiot, I was like, yeah, I'll fight Thor. Oh my God. I would love to fight Thor, you know? Um, and you know, I, I was a good fighter. I really was once upon a time. I mean, I'm so specialized now and, you know, um, but the, the, the things that I took away from it probably were two things. Um, I really enjoyed my time. I really very much enjoyed my time um, in that world, seeing uh, their level of organization and their training uh, facilities. Uh, And and I, and I just, I dream that we can get there in arm wrestling. I I really like, I love training at TriStar. I love that, you know, you could live there. Everybody's in this little community where we're living together. We're, eating together we're training together we're, we're out going for runs together and i just think that that's that's perfect yeah. that's perfect and and i know we can do that same thing in arm wrestling uh so that's that's a vision that was really cemented for me um and also you know i was i was i was like terrified for like four and a half weeks i'm like oh my god i'm like so out of shape i have four and a half weeks to like get in the gym with thor and i was i was very very focused i mean in four and a half weeks i i came a little ways but i was so i was trying my very hardest and you know by being out of my comfort zone you know 
um, it kind of relit that sense of urgency in me, I think, you know, so when I came back to my sport, I'm like, remember how scared I was, you know, to fight Thor? I'm like, if I can just live like that more in arm wrestling, I think I'll go even further. So it was good for that, but no technical or training stuff. It's just, you know. I still have a ton of uh, video footage never been seen of your last training session. Oh my God. Hey, that guy's great. I love my trainer, Zach. He was so good. Um, that guy, I can't wait till he goes UFC or something. I think he is going to kill people. He is so good. Yeah, that would be cool. Wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Do you have any sporting oh. idols or did you have from other sports growing up or even now, guys that you really kind of impressed by or inspired by? Um. Well, when I was uh when I was a kid, um, I played a lot of basketball, um, and so a lot of my a lot of my favorite athletes were basketball players, um, and you know there were a lot of them that were really good. I I don't want to say that I had one. I I thought that. I, I was really impressed by by a ton of them. You know, you can you can talk about Michael Jordan, and I would say that actually, for the longest time, I actually didn't like Michael because he was too good. I'm like, this guy is too good. I'm like, he, like he was trying to find a way to like, and then it just just he kind of couldn't. Yeah. He, yeah, and I was like, okay, this guy's incredible. And like, I mean, he's a guy because I was. I paid attention to basketball for so close. I became, you know, a very, very big fan of Michael Jordan. Um, but I mean, lots of basketball players I, I, I looked up to. Um, and then I remember, uh, you know, kind of outside of the, my, my sport, I, I just remember being so impressed and I don't even know if impressed is the right word, but I think like, uh, you know, Maybe, you know, I was maybe just scared of Mike Tyson. <laughs> you know, like I was, I was young, right? And I just remember watching Mike, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy's terrifying. Yeah. Like, what a terrifying human being. Um, and, and you know, I, I was quite a big fan of his as well. Mm -hmm. um, just you know how how aggressive and how dominant he was. Just so violent. Uh, really like that. But um, I'd say after that. I'd say I became more of a fan. I just follow the sport arm wrestling. So, you know, arm wrestling and, uh, and a lot of the people that I worked with, uh, you know, I, I'm, you know, nobody knows them, but uh, they were some of the most incredible people that, that I've known, you know, a lot of people, you know, some great people who nobody, who nobody knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Final two questions, Dev. This one's yeah. perhaps a bit of a difficult one. Everybody uh, talks about your time serving for your country and um obviously it's kind of a admirable thing everyone admires people that are willing to literally put their life on the line for their country but i would say even in my time i'm nearly 40 and in your time information we have has changed a lot because there was a time when we had a tv we've just in england we had four channels on it these days we have the internet we're privy to lots more information and i think people are more aware now that everything we're told isn't necessarily quite as it is yeah when you look back on it the kind of morality of going to other countries in order for regime change or to help that country do you still view it the same way now as you did when you were serving or do you feel like perhaps what you know now is slightly different to what you did over those years yeah those years? i'll tell you it 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 saddens me greatly like uh deep deep discomfort um i did i did 20 years um 16 of which was with with our you know was was, was with jtf uh i understand that leadership is so difficult so difficult and um you know, if you get a 51%, you're doing just fine. You know, 51%, 
it's okay. You know, you always want to get higher, but mm -hmm. if you're getting 51, you are passing and it's difficult. Uh, war is, war is a very difficult thing to enter at 51%. <clears throat> I, I unfortunately, very unfortunately have uh, become <laughs> very unhappy with the state of governance in our country um, to a degree that, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to say that I regret my service because I know that everyone that I worked with was a great person. Mm -hmm. And I know that the unit that I worked for was filled with uh, the best people. And, and I never felt that we had evil intentions. Um, it's just uh, becomes more difficult of a pill to swallow. And uh, it's hard to believe that, um, you know, the reasons why people join the forces is to make the world a better place. You know, that's kind of the base of it. You join to make the world a better place, to make it run more smoothly, to make it run more peaceful, to make it safe so that the scientists and the engineers can, can, can make our, our species more powerful so that we can do the great things that we all know that we're capable of. And you struggle when there is a lot of information that leads you to believe that in fact, our leadership may not have those same intentions. So yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do it now. Yeah. Not now. Because obviously I'm I'm English, but now I'm living in Russia and I really see like the two sides of what's going on in this current situation. And I realize how horrific the amount of kind of misinformation is. Oh my God. Um, and it's something I, I tell everybody, don't believe a single word that you see yeah. on the news. Especially now. You can't, yeah. you can't, you cannot believe a single and that's the thing is is that's it's like no I feel like everybody just knows that now. Mm -hmm. It's like news is no longer news. It's yeah. just straight propaganda. Yeah. And it was so um, different before, wasn't it? I remember as a kid watching know. TV and I don't, I'm not sure. Mm. All I know is it seems pretty apparent now. I, 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 yeah. I think it was like that, but I think we were better before, but, mm. but I don't know. Maybe information maybe. though. Yeah. Hard to say. yeah. Final question. And I'll let you eat and relax. I always ask everybody about psychology. So mm. for you, just before the match, 10 minutes before, as you're walking out and then as the match starts, where do you go? Where does Devin Larratt go in his head? Do you have to go to a bad place? Are you very calm? Are you angry? Where do you go? Uh, it's changed a lot over the years. Uh, I now kind of have a bit of a routine. Um, first, uh, um, a lot of it has to do with breathing and posture. Uh, normally, I'm a very relaxed person. My posture is relaxed. My breathing is relaxed. Uh, I'm very far away from from combat, you know, presentation. Um, but but I, but I also know that when you start to adjust your breathing, when you start to you know fill your bank account, like fill your body with oxygen, super saturate, you start to stand differently, like uh, move differently, like always move in combative ways. Uh, sometimes what I'll do just to kind of speed up the process is I will do drills like, uh, like that, I, you know, we used to do for, for when we were fighting, um, just to kind of get my posture right, to get me into a, a place where I'm ready to really, really fight. Um, I focus on positivity. I, I'm not a very positive person, actually, all the time. I, I'd say I'm probably pretty balanced uh but for the last you know 36 hours to 24 i will do everything i can mentally to just see victory um, i'll try and wipe all negative outcomes and all negative thoughts from my mind 
uh, I'll typically be extremely confident by the time that I face my opponent, regardless of who they are. Um, and um, normally one of my last parting thoughts before I just allow myself to fully be in the moment um, is to remember that, uh, that this is what makes me happy. Uh, that that I get to now go into my place of of peace, which is actually fighting. <laughs> so so yeah, it's like my parting goodbye. It's like okay, Devin, you get to fight now. Go go and have fun. And I'm like, all right, okay. And I kind of just allow myself to 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 you know say whatever I want and move however I want. And uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, nice. Okay, with that. Thanks very much for the interview. Hey, good times. Yeah, yeah. Just, cool. just want to say, man, you're, you're a hugely important person for the sport. You've done so much for it. The more popular you get, of course, then the more haters you'll get also. But <laughs> in actual fact, they're all good for the sport. They all help it's it. It's all grow. good, man. It's yeah. all good. Yeah. You yeah. do so much. And um, yeah, of course, in true essence of sport, may the best man win. But I wish you a lot of luck. And I'll see you there. Thanks, Matt. All the best. It will, we'll have to party afterwards. For sure. See you soon. Later, buddy. Mm -hmm.